beautiful. Open a new window, open a new door. And we hear so often that when one door closes, usually another one opens. If it doesn't, then there's a look for the window, right? And so our theme for the month has been Through the Looking Glass. And what I love about our way of life, Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Science of Mind, which is the laws of science, the opinions of philosophy, the revelations of religion, apply to human need and the aspirations of every living soul. And when we look at the laws of science, that's a cause and effect relationship. As within, so without. People talk about good karma, bad karma. It's all about cause and effect. And one of our principles of what we believe is that we get back what we give out. And as we lift our consciousness to the subjective and we come from that place of principle. And I love what Tesla said. He said, if you want to know the secrets of life, you think in terms of vibration, energy, and frequency. That lifts it up out of the personality and puts it right where? In principle. And if God is our source and we are co-creators with this energy, we don't look through the glass darkly. And if we do look through the glass darkly, as the Apostle Paul said, he looked through the glass darkly and then face to face and he knew in part and then he knew the wholeness of who and what he was. So as we look through the looking glass, and I love the energy of our sacred mythology where Alice puts her hand up to the looking glass and what happens? She moves into another reality, doesn't she? She moves into a reality of magic and mystical moments and the energy that allowed her to move to the next level in her own consciousness. We are all Alice. We know that, that divine feminine and divine masculine operate and channel through us. It's nothing about gender. It's about whatever we are accessing at that moment. So as we look at this morning's topic, that we are the key that opens the door. And remember that when Alice took that dive down, down, down the rabbit hole, and she opened a door, and she had to go through some changes, didn't she? She ate a cookie, and she became very, very small, couldn't reach the key up on the table, and then she took another bite of the cookie, and she was so large that she almost uh, outgrew the space. So she went through a lot of changes, just as we do in our daily life. And we have things that happen. We're all part of the human condition. And that's to be treated with compassion and understanding, not judgment. And one of the things that used to happen in the New Thought Movement was that if someone was experiencing dis-ease, uh, they were judged. Well, what's in your consciousness that you're creating this? And uh, a friend of mine said, I wanted to kick him in the chin and say, what's in yours that created that? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so that is, you know, that's so unfortunate, you know, that there was a whole wave of that. Instead of saying, you know, let's just sit down and do a spiritual treatment. Let's know the truth. And the truth of you is that you are whole, perfect and complete. And that whatever this experience is, you're going to integrate it within your heart and soul and go out into the marketplace with healing, helping hands. This is how it works. And when we do the deep dive down that rabbit hole and we're chasing that rabbit and remember that rabbit i'm late i'm late yeah that whole ego thing of self-importance and i can't stop and talk and play and i'm late i'm late energetically we've all been there we we've done that and we come to that self-realization in this moment of time that we're in the world to live, to love, to laugh, to experience, to express. And if we need to weep, we weep, don't we? And we're here to grow and expand. I love the Talmud and the ancient Talmud legend where it is said that each blade of grass has an angel looking over it saying, grow, grow, grow. And we have an angel looking over us saying, grow, grow, 
grow, grow and expand. Move from that human condition and arise triumphant and victorious as Jesus the Christ did, as his humanness gave way to the divine and that Christ consciousness arose triumphant and victorious. Buddha became a great seer, didn't he? Because he went within and he understood that man, woman was the result of all that they have thought and went into his beautiful teachings. And if we feel the holy I am presence, that when Moses looked into the burning bush, you know, and the voice of I am answered, cast off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. And so on this day, as we look at the key, remember when, and then Alice opens the door and it's, she goes into this magical garden. There's Tweedledee and Tweedledum and all of these other talking flowers. And it's just an amazing, magical, mystical energy field filled with, you know, the, the miraculous moments that only an altered state that lifts us to the next level can offer. And so as she went in, it was sort of looking like a Garden of Eden, a lost paradise, paradise lost paradise found, right? And so as we take our journeys and we realize that the door opens from within, I love that painting and the artist escapes me, but it's a very, very old painting and it has Jesus knocking on the door. And what is so interesting about the door? There's no doorknob. There's no doorknob. The door is opened from within. So we are the key that opens the door from within us. And that being part of the human condition is just out there for us to unfold. And sometimes the unfoldment, as Dr. Clayton said this morning, is very, very interesting. And I was uh, presenting uh, in Cambridge, England at Queen's College a few years ago. And I was presenting on world peace and it was for the World Forum. And I got to Queens College and, you know, I took all my things out of my luggage and I always bring a little portable altar because I like to feel the energy of wherever I am, uh, that this is symbolic of my own consciousness and creating an energy field of light. And so I got the room just absolutely beautiful and then uh, retired that night, and I was in this amazing dream, and I could just feel, I could see a waterfall, I could kind of feel the, the little uh, wonderful little specks of water on my face, the energy, you know, the liquid, the energy in the field, and suddenly I, I woke up, and coming down the wall of my room, and we were in, the dormitory quarters, uh, they, you know, they were actually very nice, but they were still that dormitory quarters at Queens College. <laughs> and the room was flooding. So my wonderful little dream of I'm, you know, at the waterfall and I can feel the energy of all this little splashing on my face was real. So I jump out of bed. I've already got the computer out and the iPad and the iPhone and all of this. And I'm getting gathering stuff, you know, putting it up in the closet. And then I run to the porter's house. And there's, you know, this, uh, the porter, to even get into the university, you have to go through the porter. And they wear those, you know, little hats and, and look very, very formal. The derby hats, you know, the English hats. And I said, my room is flooding. Oh my God, something has to be done. And this porter said, lower your voice, please. He looked at his wrist and his watch and said, I'm off in 10 minutes. I said, you don't get it. My room is flooding. Lower your voice, please. I'm off in 10 this, if, You know, I thought this was the white rabbit in the Alice in Wonderland. I really did. I mean, it was so surreal. And he was not concerned. There was no, you know, milk of kindness or understanding. 
And a man that was doing, now this is like 4.35 in the morning. The gardener started early and he heard me in the porter's office. And he came in and said, what's happening? And I said, my room is flooding. He said, let's get over there. And so, you know, he followed me up and he'd start taking all my things out. And, and uh, it was just like right there for me. And I was so deeply grateful after this, you know, going down the rabbit hole and having the rabbit say, oh, I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. I'm off in 10 minutes in his very high English accent with his little black derby. And I was just like stunned. I, I could not believe this. And so, you know, there was a commotion and some of my colleagues were awakened, obviously, as we're traipsing through the hallways and getting my things out of the now. I did not want you to know, I did not bring English wellies or galoshes. I wasn't, you know, it's August, it's summertime, so uh, I did not have galoshes. But I sure needed them because the water started rising in that room. And what happened is... A, a main pipe in the plumbing broke above me and just came swooshing down the wall into my room. So the gardener, which I love, you know, if we look at the, the secret gardener, the secret garden, here's the gardener. It's so symbolic. I love our sacred mythology. Here is the gardener, the one who plants and nurtures and, and, and cares for assisting me in this process. And of course, when I went back to the porter's office, uh, and I did want to speak to the president of the university at Queens, and, and they told me how busy he was. And we know busy is a lower vibratory frequency word. It's, you know, our lives are very full, they're involved, but the minute we say busy, we add a, a lot of other uh, extraneous things onto it, which then puts us in the role of what? The white rabbit, I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. And so word, you know, got out. And uh, uh, the vice president of the university uh, contacted me and, uh, you know, apologized. And then I was given a key, a new key. Now, on the grounds of Queens College, William Wordsworth was... Uh, he was one of their uh, speakers and presenters. And, you know, he's a very beautiful, one of my favorite poets. And I was given a key to William Wordsworth's cottage. So here is my favorite, one of my favorite poets who wrote intimations of immortality from recollections of early childhood, though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass or glory in the flower. I will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. So I went into this, got my new key, unlocked the door, and there's a fireplace, there's antique furnishings, there's charm and elegance and energy. I could feel William's energy. Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass or glory in the flower, I will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. And then there were flowers from the university and apologies and flowers from the World Forum. And uh, as I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what an amazing unfoldment this has been from uh, an ordeal to an, an adventure, right? Life's either an ordeal or an adventure. It's our choice. And I, there's a knock on the door. And I open the door, and there's my white rabbit in the black derby with another bouquet of flowers. <laughs> I am very sorry uh, the way I handled that. Uh, please accept my apologies. And I said, I t you know, I received the flowers, and I said, I know how difficult this must have been for you. And I receive these flowers in grace, and I do accept your apology. And, you know, I was able just to let it go, you know, from being awakened at 4.30 in the morning with water splashing on my face to the room flooding to having someone 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. Lower your voice, please. Uh, I'm off in 10 minutes. <laughs> From the white rabbit to there's the flowers at the door. And I'm sure that uh, he was probably coaxed a bit to uh, apologize to me after his behavior. And then the president of the university called uh, a meeting of all porters, how to handle emergencies when they arise. <laughs> how to handle emergencies when they arise. And certainly not handled as the white rabbit porter that I <laughs> had this exchange with. But out of it, leaving the dormitory atmosphere and environment into William Wordsworth's cottage that he occupied when he was there presenting at Queens College was such a gift. So when we have these <laughs> very human experiences, and as Dr. Clayton said, that we can, you know, we can, we can build on the negative or we can build on the positive. What is it that we want to experience? Is life an ordeal or is it an adventure? The choice is ours. So when we look at we are the key that opens the door into that secret garden, that each and every one of us is moving through that looking glass as we move to the next level of our own consciousness, moving to the next level. Life, remember, is a spiral. And with each revolution moving up, there's disorientation until we meet that level. Then we think, oh, this feels good. I really love this. This feels really, really good. And then we move to the next level. We are the key unlocking that door from within. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice, let them answer. And I will come into them and sup with them and they with me. That holy communion is about opening the door from within. This morning, we make the longest journey on the planet, the 18-inch journey from the head to the heart, the heart being the doorway to the soul. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The door is open from within, and we are that key. And when we allow ourselves to be in the world, to have our experience, we grow. And remember that each of us has the angel as every blade of grass. Grow, grow, grow. And as we grow, we open a portal, don't we? And we enter into the mystical, the magical, and the miraculous. And that our sacred mythology, all of that energy, lifts us to that next level and assists us. And everyone and anyone who comes within our energy field is healed and uplifted in our presence. I look through the glass darkly, but then face to face. I see in part, but then I will be known in fullness. Each and every one of us, we are on the path, we're in the world. We have our, our moments, don't we? I mean, I was lecturing and, and presenting on world peace at this, you know, at the World Forum, and I felt anything but peaceful with what was going on. And then as I breathed through it and was given, you know, I went to the next level. Here was William Wordsworth and I communing in his cottage. Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass or glory in the flower, I will grieve not, rather find strength and what remains behind. And out of that, we are lifted, each and every one of us. So we're all going somewhere. Where is it? Higher, Higher yet. yet. Where is it? Higher, Higher yet. yet. Where is it? Higher yet. yet. Because I am in a high place, and I will not come down. None of these outer things move me. I am in a high place, and I will not come down. I say to you, namaste, the divinity within me salutes the divinity within you. And the divinity within you salutes the divinity, divinity within me. And if I'm in that place in me and you are in that place in you, 
there is only one of us. Namaste. And I say shalom, the peace that passes all understanding. And God bless us every single one. And so it is. Thank you.